Rashad Johnson! Nails it for the Warriors! Oh, yes. Uh, great moment for the Warriors last year. I thought when we had a Cameron George play on, I thought we we're going to have like uh, some vision of him running down the sideline or scoring a try for the Casino Cougars. Yeah, yeah. As the Greyhounds run around the <laughs> yeah, rugby league yeah. track. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not to be, though. The CEO of the uh, Warriors joining us now, Cameron George. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm well, thanks, Chats. I uh, hope you're both well over there in the sunshine, enjoying the heat. Now, I think we are. We certainly are. I tell you what, it is bloody hot. Um, not a lot of people know, though, that you are, yeah, of course, the CEO of, of the Warriors and doing an exceptional job. And how you nursed that club through COVID was absolutely amazing. But uh, your your footy her- heritage and pedigree come, goes back to the Northern Rivers of New South Wales, Cameron. Yeah, mate. The uh, good old Casino Cougars. Uh, grew up in Casino and played a lot of footy there and out at Tamworth as well. Played a number of years out there and um, I finished off uh, before I moved to New Zealand, captain coaching uh, Evan Ted, little coastal town near Ballina. Nice. So had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun with some mates and that's that's what it was all about in the bush and um, it's great to be a part of the elite level in, you know, in the NRL and um, mate, there's no difference. Uh, the guys want to have fun with their mates, and um, you know we had a bit of a bit of that last year. We've got a good footy team and a good coach, and um, that's what it's all about. So we just want to have that environment here at the Warriors. Did you ever come up against uh, the Byron Bay team when Sats were the you, Red Devils? Were you captain coach Sats or just coach of the coach. Red Red Devils? I mean, very hard to get the boys together mm. and focused. I believe. Was. Did you ever come up against the Red Devils? Mate, I did, but not in uh, Scotty's days. Uh, um, and they were a pretty good team uh, club when I was there, and I think didn't think they had too many problems attracting players to come and play for them because uh, <laughs> they uh, they certainly enjoyed the after matches at the Beach Hotel. And <laughs> yeah. The Great Northern, I think, sponsored them in the was, day yeah. as well. So um, it was pretty easy to um, you know, get a player to come and play at Byron Bay. So they always had a pretty strong team. Now, Cam, twenty twenty three was really impressive, of course, and. So I'm thinking the players and the staff and all the departments would have returned to the office with a bit of a spring in their step. Have you have you sensed that? Yeah, look, you know, the guys were really happy last year and, you know, uh, finished off the year as best we can and uh, could and, um, you know, really pleased with that. But they've come back with a real desire and hunger. It's something that, um, you know, it's really obvious to me that they've come back to work knowing that they want to complete, you know, the task at hand and, they're happy about being there. They're um, they're training really well, um, and all things being equal over the summer, I can see him putting in a really hard off season. Um, you know, whether he and his team aren't going light on the situation, they they actually know what they need to improve on, and they're they're absolutely hungry to do it. So, really pleased with that because um, you know sometimes you can come back and think we've achieved something and and not be ready to put in, but that's certainly not the case here. Uh, which is pleasing to see. Yeah, definitely. You just can't be happy with obviously not being there in the uh, first week of October. Now, all the talk has been about Jerome Lewis. Where's he going to go for 2025? And out of nowhere, Cam, there's talk about Cam, uh, Kurt Catewell and the New Zealand Warriors are linked. Now, how did this all come about? And is the club identified him as a bit of a piece of the puzzle to get in the grand final day? Yeah, look, Kurt has um, come across our our desk is someone of interest. Uh, Webby obviously is connected with him through his days at Penrith. Uh, he's very fond of him as uh, as a person, first and foremost, and clearly he's got some great capability on the field and he's had success everywhere he's gone. And We're going through a, you know, a, a phase in our footy club where we didn't have juniors for a number of years due to COVID, um, and now we've re- kicked that, you know, restarted that off and we're looking for experience high high-level athletes, competitors to come into our club to really set the standards for our kids or the future coming through. And Kurt's one of those guys. And um, look, if we can get him, fantastic. Um, I think he'll add significant value to our footy team and our club and our fan base would really enjoy him. Um, He's a winner. And uh, that's what we want. We want competitors in our footy club. So where's that at, Cam? How far down the track are you? Are you confident he'll be there in 24? Oh, mate, not... Not confident. Um, look, the, the options there. If you know, if uh, him and Brisbane want to look at those, um, look, it's up to him where he's at with his longer term future. We're, we're certainly express our interest, um, and look, he's got to decide 
you know, he's got a year to go to the Broncos and they've got to have that discussion. And mm. if they want to, he wants to come and talk to us about this year, mate, we're, we're certainly willing to. But um, we respect the fact he's got a contract with Brisbane. But he's got to decide and him and the club will decide what they want to do and then we, we can be there if, uh, if need be. And Cam, is it the reports are saying you're, you're tabling a three-year offer. Is that true? Yeah, look, we've said there's a long there's a longer term option here for him. Um, you know, he's on the market for 25, and that's what we're looking at um, now. If that was to eventuate, and um, him and Brisbane decided that there was an option for this year for us to talk to him about, we'd be happy to do that. But our interest has been around the longer term uh, proposition as well. Yeah. Now, re-signing of Tahu Harris, uh, that was always going to be a given. Now, I was fortunate enough to hear firsthand the presentation, like your glowing praise of, of this young man, how important both he and his wife were to the club and are to the club off the field, especially through the COVID years. Now, we've never got to know Tahu Harris that much as a fan because he's so quiet and he just does everything under the radar. What, what kind of leader is he that you see each and every day? Uh, he's all about actions. Scotty, he, um, you know, he's not a big talker, uh, but when he does talk, as you know, you've been in those environments, they, they execute the message really well, very decisive, and he doesn't say or overstate, you know, the position. He just then goes and leads it. Um, he's a real student of the game. He understands it. He, he knows the players against that he's playing with or against, and um, he's a, he's got a real footy brain about him. But off the field, mate, he's a terrific person to have around the club. Um, and you know when you when you hit hard times and hit adversity, nine times out of ten that's when you find out who your leaders are. And he stood up unannounced and just kept working through the COVID stuff. And um, you know honestly, meant what I said that night that you know, Natalie, his wife, um, they stuck with us through thick and thin. They led through it. You know they led us through it. Um, he had some hard times because he had an ACL during that period. But not once did he ask to come home. He stayed there and, and you know, led the club through it. So um, it was really great to see him get an extension. Um, in the modest way he is, he um, he just said to the players the other day the reason why he wanted to play on because he wanted to win a premiership with this group of players. And he's setting out to, to lead that you know, over the next couple of years, which is great to see. Yeah, good to hear. Great to hear the commitment to the club now. Warriors social media sent fans <laughs> in a frenzy last week when the vision of uh, Roger Tuivasa Shek turning up for training and how's he? I mean, he looks good all the time, but how's he looking back in league as opposed to Union? Oh, mate, he's so happy. Um, he's really enjoying the environment. Like he left in twenty twenty one when you know halfway through to get back and embark on his rugby career and. He made the All Blacks, so not everyone gets to do that. So mm. he'd achieve some great things there. But, um, you know, to have him back in our colours, have him back in our smart, he feels extremely comfortable. He he was really clear to, to us during the course of, you know, deciding that he wanted to come back. Um, he didn't want to be a, a, a nuisance or a distraction, if you like, by coming in um, being the former captain. So he's been very deliberate in making sure that you know, he's a part of the, the squad, not a leader of the squad. And um, he's been great for our young kids because he started on day one with them and they got to train with him from day one. So naturally, his standards have been, um, you know, imposed upon all the kids from day one, which has been an amazing experience for them. And we're very excited to have him back and he's extremely excited to be back and looking forward to pulling on the boots. I know, a couple, again. I know a couple of 17-year-olds that are over at the Warriors doing the pre-season over there and I just check up with them on, on message. How are you going? How's the training going? You know, yeah. you're, you're eating well, you're training hard. And one of the kids texts me, he goes, I can't believe I walked past Roger Tuivasa <laughs> Shek. He's just got that aura about him, hasn't he? He's, he's so good to have him have back in the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, no, he's... Fantastic, mate, and he's he's a terrific guy. And you know, Chanel Harris Tavita's back as well, and they've come back into the environment after a year of what we've done last year, and they can they can really see the difference. But they're not coming back to be a part of it; they're coming back to help create a future and a successful one. So, um, yeah, pumped for both of them. Yeah, geez, the the names you're talking about coming into this side after what you achieved last mm. year, I, 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 it's going to be amazing how 2024 is going to look for you. Hey, off the back of the success of last year, and Sats and I were on air throughout September when we had uh, the Wars going deep into the finals. 
we had the All Blacks mm. competing at the World Cup. But Cam, all the talk was about the war uh, was about the Wars, was about the Warriors. It wasn't about the All Blacks. And I, I want to know off the back of that, what's commercial support and membership been like off the back of the success of this year? Yeah, outstanding. Um, look, it was a, a huge movement over here in support. Uh, in a World Cup year, as you touch on, which rarely happens for us. And um, it was mind-blowing to see the support we got, not just here, but in Australia as well and, and in other parts of the world. But um, I think we really awoke the giant over here about what rugby league's about. And, um, you know, with that, the commercial support coming into this year has been outstanding. Uh, we've got our best membership numbers to date um, in our club's history. Uh, 2012 was our, our, our next biggest year, and that was on the back of the 2011 grand final appearance. So um, we're equal and better of that at, at this point in time. So everything's heading in the right direction, but we're none the wiser of um, you know of what what next year looks like. All we do know is that we're going to work bloody hard over the summer, be ready like every other club. And we're not taking it for granted. So there's there's just no one in this club that is sitting on their hands. We're all striving to be better in every way, shape, or form we can. Yeah, wouldn't see it any other way. Nice. Now, uh, before we let you go, Adam Fanua Blake, how hard has that been to navigate, Cam? And um, and two part question. I know he's staying 2024, but are you still you still confident you'll be able to keep him beyond that, or are you resigned to the fact that he that he'll be gone? Oh, look, the first and foremost for us was. You know, working with Adam through the compassionate grounds, and you know, like any player we've had in the past, we've always had a open mind with our approach, and and Adam was equal to that with us, and didn't want to let us down as well. Um, so, you know, he's here this year. Um, he's still working through what his future looks like beyond 2024. Um, so, there's any number of options. One could be he may wish to remain. So, um, we're just working with his management. Um, we're working with Adam making sure he's okay in the immediate future and what happens in the longer term, you know, time will tell. But he's welcome at this club. He knows that. We know that. Um, but the most important thing to us is making sure he and his family are okay in the immediate future. We had one of the texts from, from a listener, which is Moth, and he said uh, about the Adam Fanua Blake scenario, he said if he nominates a club cam that's in Sydney, one of the grounds, to the NRL and, and to yourself, what club that he would look at potentially um, negotiating with, can you then discuss with that club any any potential trade? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, you know, Adam is you know, high end in terms of his uh, capability and um, we we need to ensure that we do the best interests, you know, do what's best for our footy club. And Adam knows that and his management knows that. We're not the first club to go through this process. Mm. So we do then, you know, we'll work with the, um, with the club that he may have some interest in or vice versa and and see what we can uh, we can get out of that, and that that, that will be we'll want a player um, because we've got to fulfil the you know the, the the spot if Adam does go. But look at this stage, um, our focus is just working with Adam and his management. Um, but those options are certainly on the table in due course if need be. God, I hope he stays. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right, Cam, before we let you go, there's a massive game of rugby league coming up in the Northern Rivers of New South Wales, uh, the Casino <laughs> Cougars. And I believe you're pulling in some old war horses uh, to help you out at a charity day. What's going on there? Well, I don't know if it's a charity day. What it is is our old boys' day. And uh, I was having a beer with a few boys the other day, and we're trying to make it. We're trying to really kick it off. And I said, okay, I said, I've got an idea. How about we get Scotty Sattler to pull the boots on and play a game for us? And they said, no way. And I said, what's <laughs> this? And, uh, mate, he bounced straight back. I think he started stretching already. Uh, the crowds will be hanging off the rafters. Right. And uh, it'll make country league great again. Mm. Well, can I just say, at the start of the show tonight, he was complaining about the onset of gout. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, careful what you get. We've also got a, a scrawny uh, former 5'8 slash winger in Matt Rogers. He'll play. He'll play. We'll drag him in as well. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Don't worry about the gout, mate. There'll be plenty of tablets we can give you down there. I'm sure everyone around casinos have plenty of gout in their life. So Fantastic. we'll get through that, mate. You'll All be right. All right. Good luck, mate. You host the Sharks in round one at Go Media Stadium on Friday, the 8th of March. Cameron George, good luck with 2024, mate. And as always, we love the time you give us here on Sports. Thanks, Cam. No worries, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.